Top 10 NFL Defensive Tackles, 10-6, 2016 edition. Sheldon Richardson, age 26. Sean Robinson, age 22. Kyle Williams, age 34. Brandon Williams, age 28. Grady Jarrett, age 24. Don Terry Poe, age 26. Number 10, DeForest Buckner, age 23. So how about another rookie making it onto the list? First you got Joey Bosa, now you got Buckner. Buckner has been able to prove his will, prove his dominance, prove that he belongs in the NFL as a D-tackle, and he does. He's a, a big dude that actually is very athletic, just in great shape. Uh, you know, from the from Hawaii and um, coming straight out of Oregon, seventh overall pick drafted this past year by the 49ers. What happened? Well, they had a great pick. 49ers actually, they got a great pick. Actually, um, there may be a lot of 49er jokes, but they got a great pick with uh, getting DeForest Buckner. This guy is what, exactly what they needed on defense. They just have to build more, and I think their team. Uh, maybe someday we'll, we'll look pretty pretty decent. Uh, but yeah, no, his season this year, very, very good season for his first year in the league. I think next year he'll have another great season, so I don't blame him for that. I think he'll have another great season and continuously having better, better seasons. Um, so he signed for three years, $13.64 million. Very good contract for a guy that was a rookie. Uh, again, he was at four years, so now he's at three years. It doesn't matter. He's he, that's a pretty good contract. Of course, it's going to go up if his stats continue to progress and he becomes better and better. Uh, and I think this was a good case of him being on the on the top ten. Just his case for it was it was sort of easy in a way because there was a lot of D tackles that weren't really doing super well this year. Uh, I think D tackle is one of the most rarest kind of kind of position players, I guess, in terms of defense. They get a little overlooked. Actually, I think they get really overlooked at times, and uh, they don't really understand D-tackle. It's another good position. It's another valuable position to the defense. It's the center of the, of right there, of the D-line, you know. He needs to take care of the center, uh, get some tackles in there that gets within the holes, and, of course, you know, try to get to the QB if he can. Uh, but it's, it's not an easy position, so I give credit to credit where credit's due. D-tackle is one of the hardest positions in football, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Buckner, uh, 15 games he played and started, he had one pass deflection, two fumble recoveries, six sacks, and a combined tackles of 50, of 73, sorry, 73. Um, and so that's really, that's really good. That's what you need. You need tackles. You need, you need to get there. And again, they didn't get to playoffs. Nothing of that. That's his pretty much his, all his, all of his stats. He did the, make the 2016 NFL all-rookie team. So that's very good to see um, and you know he's he's making himself a name out there in the bay and I know that the NFL will they will they will know who this guy is this guy is and uh, NFC West always has some pretty good defensive players it just shows to you 49ers yes they may be a struggling team but they have some talent there and uh, I have to say it's great to see DeForest Buckner on this list and I can't wait to see next year if he can improve on it Number nine, Linval Joseph, age 28. Another guy that gets overlooked in this Vikings defense. This Vikings defense actually has a lot of potential. If you didn't see last year, they were pretty good. They were a very good defense. I really do believe in this uh, defensive team that is the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, overall, do I believe that they have a shot at making the playoffs? I feel like they do. Um, yes, AP is gone. But it's post-AP area now. It's time for the passing to start being a thing and, and being a focal point. Teddy Bridgewater to become better and the defense to step up. I know they are. They're going to step up. They're a very, very solid team. I really enjoy them. Now, Linval Joseph just signed a contract four years, $50.35 million. All well spent. All worth it. I really believe in this guy and his potential of being a star out there in Minnesota for years to come because he's still not done. He's far from being done. Very good star, very underappreciated guy in the defense, but very great guy for closing gaps and to get to the QB and 
just an athletic freak, honestly. Um, and to, to show you, this year he played and started 16 games. He had three forced fumbles, four sacks, and 77 tackles. So it shows you he gets tackles. He gets it done. He gets it in the trenches. He's a tough guy, and I enjoy him a lot. I enjoy watching him a lot. Um, didn't get to the playoffs, so we couldn't see what he could have done. Got to the Pro Bowl, very well deserving of being a Pro Bowl player. And I think he'll be in the Pro Bowl next year and then year after yet and the year after that. I'm sorry, I can't talk today. Um, and I just believe that he will be a star. Number eight, Malik Jackson, age 27. You know what a year of not being in Denver actually cost the Broncos? It costs him to be from a the best defense in the league, a deadly one, to losing a key guy that people don't realize was a big part of the defense. Malik Jackson was very, very, very important to this Broncos defense, and people did not realize it because, again, no one pays attention to the D-tackle. Of course, yes, he was a D-end, and this is even more impressive because he transitioned to D-tackle, but he always transitioned from D-end to D-tackle. So he's a very big part of it. Obviously, what I mean, people don't understand. I'm talking about the people that are more mainstream fans that are not really in depth of research and stuff. They just think of the power names, the names that people know, you know, very well. But I'm here to just show you different guys that people might not know. And you get an idea of how big these other players are to the to the defense, to the offense, to whatever I'm talking about. Now Malik Jackson got a five year seventy one point twenty five million dollar contract left from the Jaguars. He got signed a lot for the Jaguars. And his first year put him in D tackle and it was a really good thing to put him at D tackle. Many people thought he wouldn't thrive. I feel like he thrived a lot. I feel like he can get a lot better, and I feel like he's going to be a lot better. Um, he is a stud, um, and he is he's ready to go. I'm ready to see him even more. Um, he's just a great player um, from a fifth rounder just to now. It's great. Uh, now, this year, he played at 16 and started. He also had four pass deflections, one fumble recovery, six and a half sacks, and 33 tackles. It shows you he can get to the ball. He can tackle, he can get guys, he can sack the QB, he can recover some key fumbles in there, some key games, so he could be that guy. He also can be a guy that if there is a pass down the middle, you could see him try to swat at it. That's really good. That's a smart defender. You can't get the sack? All right, well, let me try to get something that, that to make sure that we don't give them extra yards. That's a smart football player. That's what I love about Malik Jackson. I love about D tackles and the D line a lot. I love seeing the D line because they're very underappreciated most of the time, but they are the first line of defense, you know, um, and they truly are warriors out there. They're literally putting their bodies out in the line to make sure that no yards, nothing gets past them. And sometimes it will get past them, but they try really hard. They're athletic, they're big, and that's what makes it very impressive. And Malik Jackson is another case of a athletic guy. Number seven, Marcel Darius, age 27. Okay, they don't have a nickname for him in any page because all my stats I refer to as pro football reference and all that, just so you guys don't, that just so you guys can tell where I get my knowledge from. Obviously, it's not the top of my head. I'm not that smart. I'm a pretty smart guy, but I'm not a genius like that. I don't have that kind of memory. Um, but what can I tell you? is they don't have his proper name that he needs it's mr big stuff mr big stuff what does he do he plugs a hole he's like one of those uh what is what is that called it's one of those like putty kind of thing where you just kind of put it in the wall and it'll just it'll, no water comes through no leaks nothing that's what he is he's like a giant putty that you put him out there no one's gonna get in that area because he's first of all massive he's Pretty tall, pretty dude, you know, 6'3", 319 pounds. You think you can move with a 319 pound man coming at you? Nope, I don't think so. I think that's one hell of a man. That's a hell of a dude coming right at you. I wouldn't want to go that way. I feel like I'd just be like, nope, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go the other way. You know, at least I get, I'll get sacked by Jerry Hughes or I'll get, uh, 
or I'll get demolished and tackled by Jerry Hughes. All right, well, that's all good, you know. Um, at least I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere, you know, or go through Kyle Williams. Kyle Williams is a little bit older gentleman, you know. But anyway, Marcel Darius is a plug, and it's kind of a shame because he didn't get to play much uh, this past year. So, yes, he is a little bit down on the list. He would be top five. But at the same time, in 2015, when he played 15 games, he only gave him up with two sacks. Like, this is a guy that has can go multiple sacks, multiple, you know, tackles, getting a lot of pass deflections and forced fumbles, trying to, you know, bring out that mess in an offense. He hasn't had these past two years. So, yes, I'm putting him at a ranking that I can probably, people could say, is a little bit too high for him. But I just respect him that much that I think he's going to improve what it, what has happened and he had a better year last year than he did the previous previous year so it's showing some upside he just needs to continue to train more lose a little bit of weight i think he's becoming a little slow with all that massive fat on him uh, but he is a big man he's very athletic for his his size everything um, he's a great athlete i just would like for him to Keep training, keep being better. I think he's going to be a fantastic, fantastic D tackle. I think he'll be a lot higher, you know, uh, come next year, depending on how everything goes. Um, just got to stay healthy. Now, five years, $80.48 million for him on his contract. It's very good. That's very good. That's a lot of money for a big man. That's why I'm saying you got to live up that $80 million. You got to live up to that. Come on now. Come on. I believe in you, Marcel. Now, 39 tackles. That's how much he had last year. Three and a half sacks and a pass deflection in eight games that he played, seven games that he started. It's a lot better than last last year. So he's showing some signs. He's showing some really good ability. Again, hasn't been in the Pro Bowl in two years. Hasn't been a first-team All-Pro in two years. Hasn't been a in any kind of award kind of thing. You keep practicing. You keep getting better, Marcel. You're healthy. I got you. I think you deserve to be top player in this league. Just gotta, just gotta be, be better. Just gotta get better. And, but he's, uh, he's a pretty good D tackle. He really is. He's, he's gifted and special. Number six, Nindamakung Sue, age 30. We're gonna wrap up this video with Sue. He's gonna be number six. He's that close for being a top five guy, like he once was. He's actually extremely disruptive. He's a leader in this defense. He's a focal point. He's, you know, he's the Sue that we know. He is a wrecker. He's a game changer. He really is. And I ob obviously, in my honest opinion, I feel like if he continues to just have really good years like, like he keeps doing, if he continues to be the back of being just a really uh, a reckless man over there, uh, that can, it's kind of, you know, clean. Don't be dirty out here, you know. Sue has had that reputation. Uh, but if he continues to just produce... Uh, this is a guy that I think that could be recognized as maybe a future Hall of Famer. You really never know. Um, he's just really talented, really gifted. Uh, just a really good overall talent that I can see going super far, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, it's come a long way for sure. Uh, so, now, in Miami. He's in Miami, obviously. He was a Lion. His contract reads right now, five years, $76.25 million. That is very, very good money spent. Like I said, he can always improve. He can always get better. But this year, he had a really good year. He had one of those years that, um, honestly, it was kind of up there in terms of uh, his best years, I guess. It just He just started showing more flexibility in what else he can do besides trying to get tackles and sacking. And, you know, he was able to kind of get those, you know, those swats going that he usually can get. He's able to kind of force havoc you know trying to get some forced fumbles in there actually got a fumble recovery no forced fumbles but he's trying you know and he's he's becoming that that player that i i've always loved to watch um and he's coming he's coming back to life it's really nice now this year he played in 16 games and started he has not missed one game not has not missed like one game really uh in, since 2012 and that's, that's crazy. That's insane. That's awesome. It's durability is, is what I'm getting at. It's a guy that's not really injury prone. That's very good to see. Now, in those 16 games, he was able to get six pass deflections, one fumble recovery, five sacks, and a total of 72 tackles. So, like I said, he's bringing the tackle game with him. He's bringing the sack game with him. You know, he's getting some other things, trying to get better um, in the playoffs. 
he did pretty well in the one game with the Miami Dolphins, four tackles for a sack. That's not bad. That's really not bad. Um, I don't think of him as at all as being down at all. I think he's, you know, he's just one of those guys that you have to actually look out in the field, make sure he's always there on time, or else he's gonna get you, and he's just gonna, just gonna, he's gonna murder you, man. He's he's a big dude. He really is. Like you gotta make sure you know where he's at at all times, and uh, it earned him a earned him a 2016 Pro Bowl this year, which is very good. Hasn't been a first team all pro and or any other awards. But you gotta think, okay, he's a pro bowler. He's starting to kinda you know, he's finding his own. And I just think that Sue is just gonna keep climbing up and get better with age and uh he's gonna get just more mature and I I see Sue as uh being a guy that's gonna wreck havoc again next year. And um the other five guys on this list though really proven their themselves in terms of worthy of being top five though.